Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up the initial circuits for a PvP room. How to get weapons to start damaging people, how to make people have health, respawn, have a health bar, stuff like that. Okay, so to start out, we need to make a new room. This is RCL's Super Death Room. So the original idea for this video is I was going to go into the PvP template room and kind of go through the circuits with you guys. But after giving up on it and then coming back to it a couple months later, I kind of narrowed everything down to just the basics to get you started. First off, we should probably like make an actual like PvP, you know, map. I'm not good at designing yet. That's why I'm in Maker Pin class. But we'll do a little something. All right, we'll put some very basic obstacles in here. Actually, you know what? Let me see what kind of inventions I have that I can just throw in here to make scenery or something. All right, just using my random inventions, we have a PVP map. There's obstacles and stuff, so you can't just immediately shoot each other. Tiny Box Tim, I hope you don't mind. We're gonna use you to put circuits on, okay? Ooh. Okay. So in a previous video, I described how you can get projectiles hurting players. You have to use a player definition board. So let's start off with a player definition board. And then you want to edit the player definition board. You want to get an event receiver, but then you configure that event receiver and change it to projectile hit player. And now look at all these options. So I don't really know why, but in experimenting with this, you have to make an event and have that event send this stuff out of the player definition board. So even though it gets initiated here inside the player definition board, you have to send it out with an event from out of the player definition board. So we exit out and let's get an event definition. So then what you're gonna do is configure that event definition. We'll give it some name. I think I'll give it like player hit maybe. Oh, maybe that's already. Let's just do hit. So we want to add two properties to this. We want one property that is going to output the player that was hit. And then we want another property that's going to output the amount of damage we want the weapon to do or the amount of damage that it does. So let's go make a name for it. We'll say player hit. Change it into a player type. Add that property. And then we got to do one more, which is for the damage. So, and we'll make that into an integer add property. So now on this event, we have player hit and we have damage. So now let's go back into player definition board. We're going to get an event sender. So configure event sender. Go ahead and put your hit event on there. And then you can see it adds our two inputs that we put in. We have player hit and we have damage. And then I'm going to keep it to local. Then we're going to connect the hit player to the player hit and we're going to connect the damage to the damage and then connect up our execution we're basically done inside the player definition board although we do still have to configure the player definition board and make sure that it's active so we'll do that and then save the room once it's active so now that it's active if we go up here above my head can you do i even have where are the circuits above my head if i edit the circuit above my head you can see all the stuff is still up here all right so now what we need to do is initialize like the health system the health bars and giving you guys health we're assuming this is going to be like one of those games where you know start up at the top on some platform and then you jump off so it's like a continuous forever pvp type deal so for that we're going to get another event receiver we're going to configure it to player joined then what we're going to need is a if player is local this ensures that this only runs on the machine of the player who joined. Then if that player is local, we wanna get an integer variable. And then we're gonna mess with this a little bit. We're gonna configure it and we will rename it to health. Submit that. You could make it a cloud variable so that if you leave and come back, it'll save how much health you have. But I think right now we'll just leave it this way. And once a player joins, you wanna go ahead and give them 100% health. All right, so now a player joins, as soon as they join, they'll get health of 100. But now we wanna show that as a health bar. So we're gonna use some HUD UI stuff. Oh, set HUD element enabled. That's what we're looking for. Then we'll plug that up right there. Go ahead and connect that. We're gonna turn that to true. Now for this target, what we actually need is a HUD element constant. We'll go ahead and connect it to target. Now we have to configure this. What kind of HUD element do we want? I want specifically a green bar on the bottom of the screen. 
but you can put it all over the place. You can go lower left side, uh, primary, secondary. I think primary is actually what we're gonna use. Upper left, upper middle. So you have a bunch of different places you could put it. I believe we're gonna do primary. Okay, I want it to be green because it's a health bar. What value do you want it to be set at when it's enabled? I want it to be set at 100 because that's where health is at. Max value, just in case you want extra health, but I'm gonna just leave it at 100. So now we have it so whenever a player joins the room, it'll only run on their system. It will give them 100% health and then it will let them see a little green health bar at the bottom of the screen so that they can you know, know how much their health is. Now we gotta actually do the damage. For that, we're gonna get another event receiver and we're gonna receive the hit event that we made earlier. So you can see the two properties to player hit and damage that are from this that we got from inside our, our player definition board, they're gonna output right here. So again, I'm gonna use a if player is local so that it only runs on the system of the player who actually got hit. So next we wanna subtract the damage from the health. So what we're gonna do is clone that health and we get a subtract chip if they are local want to update their health so now we want to subtract from their health so we're going to take this damage because we're going to subtract that amount of damage from that health and then update this health with the damage taken off so this is our new health what we have to do is update our hud element so that it reflects what just happened so what we're going to need is a set hud element value so once we update the health then we need to update this HUD element, our green bar on the bottom of the screen, and we need it to be updated from 100 to whatever this new number is. So here I have a pistol. When I shoot myself, this should glow, meaning that the projectile hit player within our little chip above our head is going to that event and sending that event out here to this. So there you go, proof. Now we need a system to kind of like respawn people whenever they reach zero or, or below zero. So we get an if, so we'll do a less than or equal. We will hook up the bool variable here. So once it sets the HUD element, we want to see, hey, is this health below zero? If it is, then what do you want to do? This is where things get a little bit different than like the CV1 stuff where it would make you freeze and then the screen would turn black and white and then you would wait a few seconds. Not exactly 100% sure how to do that. But in the PVP room, what they did was they added a roll that would freeze you. And I don't know if it made it go black and white or not. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. If it equals zero, add a roll. And on this roll, we're going to edit it so that you can't move for like three seconds. Then it's going to respawn you. Then it'll remove the roll and it'll let you move again. It'll reset your health and everything. So if it's below zero, then let's add a roll. We haven't made the roll yet, but we're going to add the roll. And then we'll do like a delay. Let's make it like, like a three second delay. Then we're gonna do a respawn after delay. Because of what we did earlier when we had it only run on the local player system, we have to make sure that this is, the target is only the local player. So let's just make it local player, get local player chip. Hook it up there. Let's see, let's turn the res effects off. For this video specifically, I'm just gonna do a vector create with all zeros. So you get spawned at the zero, zero, zero position. So we're just gonna do a vector create here. That way it's real simple for this video. Right after you get respawned, I wanna reset your health to 100. So go ahead and clone this health variable that we got earlier. That'll reset your health to 100. And then we wanna go ahead and update the HUD element again. Remember the target is gonna be your, your constant from way over here. And then we wanna set that value to 100, which is, we're just resetting the health to 100. And then let's remove the roll. So let me just take one more pass here to make sure I, I everything I've thought of all of the, the basics here. All right, so you get hit. This is gonna have the chips work within it. It's gonna activate this event. This event is only gonna work for the local player. It's gonna subtract whatever the damage was. Oh, you set the damage within the gun. So you can do this with a projectile launcher. You can also configure this and it'll show up there. All right, anyway, so I showed you how to do damage. It'll, it'll find out where your health is. It'll subtract whatever the damage is from your health. Okay, and then it will set your little green bar at the bottom so that it matches whatever your health is. And then it will check, oh, hey, do you have less than zero, zero or less? If you do have zero, so you're gonna add the roll. Let's go ahead and make that. So we need a roll chip. Configure it, edit the roll, and just say that they won't be able to move. There we go. All right, new roll. It'll add the roll, okay? And then after three second delay, it will respawn the local player because all of this is running on the local player's system. 
it will reset their health to 100 it will set their hud to reflect that it's 100 now and then we will remove the roll so the person can start moving again okay so there is an issue with the circuit let's say that you get shot and your health is like zero right and then people just keep shooting you before you respawn basically it's going to keep trying to add it's going to keep respawning you essentially so what we've got to do is add in like a bool variable and another if chip in order to prevent that redundant respawning from happening so we need to clone this if chip and we are going to bring it we're going to put it in between the if is local and the health we'll, we'll make it so that if it's true then do damage but if it's false don't do damage so now let's get a bool variable hook that bool variable up right here so once a person does have their health below zero we want to switch this bool to false so let's remove that one and switch it to false that's what that is and then we'll reconnect over here and then once the player has gone through the respawn has had their 100 health has set the ui and removed the roll then we're going to go clone that same bool and bring it over here. and this time we'll make it true so this way once all of that has happened then it becomes true and you can be damaged again here's the experiment that i want to try let's treat this room like it is going to be a published pvp map how would you guys further this room should i add power-ups and, and and i'll make them into videos should i add power-ups should i add in you know unlockables once you get a certain number of kills should i add in you know special roles or consumables or what is it that i should add to this you guys leave in the comments what i should do next to this room hold up one more thing i i, I in, when i practiced this i did the bull variables reversed but since i've got them true giving damage and false not giving damage when you spawn in the room i believe the bull is going to be default false so this means when you enter the room when you do the player joined you need to also put a bull a bull variable there so that it's true so that you will take damage actually i'm going to change this vector thing like i said this is going to be like one of those giant free-for-all rooms where you start off at the top with like a like a platform and then you jump off into the arena so let me go make that platform up somewhere and then get the position and put that position in this vector all right we're gonna resave <laughs> we're gonna try and publish this and see what happens oh yeah i gotta put weapons in too <laughs> i keep remembering stuff so when you first join the room you need to respawn up there so let me do a set position when you spawn in so if they're local, before we even do health, set that player's position to that vector that we got for the top bit. Okay, and then do set health and everything. Save room, save. So now, again, to test out, make sure everything works when we get in the room, I'm gonna have to leave and come back. Hey, look at that. Look, it respawned me up here on the American flag. And then we have our little health bar here. And then if we pop on down, get a weapon all right turn it on ourselves boom 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 can't move or no i can move what happened all right edit roll oh can move <laughs> can move yes i do okay can move no oh, i'm almost dead uh, yeah fun fact, almost dead uh, fun fact with the so i need a shot uh, with the look wait give me this video helped you out make sure to throw a like on it subscribe all that good stuff use my code rcl1 in rec room rcl man out <laughs>